My teaser trailer opens with the idents of the production companies behind my film. They're called Street Films and Square Lens Pictures. The UK Film Council are renowned for their stake in low-budget British film, producing films like Fish Tank, London to Brighton and This Is England. The film is set in London, so Film London seemed like a simple choice. Street Films and Square Lens Productions are the last idents as they stake the most money in the film. The reason I've used the idents I have is because they represent the feel of the film before the trailer is even started. Gritty, edgy and British. From experiences watching films, I, um, it's conventional to use idents as the opening to any trailer. The establishing shot is a pan across our protagonist's room. Immediately it doesn't look very interesting, but um, strangely that was the effect I was looking for. This is because later in the film, the element of boredom is what drags him into the terrible situations he will later regret. I wanted it to be um, just as an average boy's room as possible, really. Um, Chris is just your average teenage, um, teenager, and um, he plays violent, um, he's playing a violent popular video game called Call of Duty. Um, and this is a virtual metaphor for um, the violence he will soon be experiencing in his real life. Um, and he's wearing his hoodie and trackies, which is um, the urban uniform of most teenagers. The solarize effect I have used on the titles is really good for the situation. The effect flashes all the colours negative on the screen. This is a metaphor for things in Chris's life suddenly turning negative. Also, the effect helps to link the establishing shots together as the next shot fades in from negative. The next shot introduces one of the main characters, Danny. In the storyline, he is Chris's big brother's best mate. He's meant to look older and more mature than Chris, and because Chris's brother is no longer in the country and his dad left, Danny is left as a father figure to Chris. This shot is really just meant to let the audience know that this character isn't on Chris's level. He's more experienced. The next shot is of Chris's mum. The shot is positioned so um, there is symmetry with her and a picture of Virginia Woolf on the wall behind her. The lighting is shadowy until the, um, the side light on her desk bursts through. And she, um, she looks concerned. Um, this is the main element of the opening sequence, concern, worry and doubt. And these feelings surround Chris and the audience will soon find out why. The next few shots show Chris waking up for an average school day. He gets out of bed and gets ready. Um, the shot follows on to reveal he has received an expulsion notice from school. Um, he keeps this from his parents, which is really the catalyst of his downfall, um, as the audience sees later in the film. Um, he puts on his school clothes and pretends like nothing is wrong um, for the next few days. Um, and These shots are a montage of his deception as he does up his tie and leaves the house. The next shot is perhaps the most important in the film. It shows the change of character. This is Chris's descent from being a good little boy who does his homework and gets in on time and obeys his parents to being forced into a world of crime, deception, money, scandal and violence. The audience finds out he's been keeping a normal looking bin bag on the street with spare clothes in it. He changes his clothes and for me the part of the film which shows his change is the shot where he flicks his hood up. These shots are all concentrating on Chris so he is centred in all of them. In several of the shots I've just described, there are several strong horizontal and vertical lines which give the feeling of prison bars, which links in with the entrapment, his entrapment, and the film's title. The following sequence is a montage of Chris's boredom. In this scene we see his newfound sense of uselessness, um, him trying to come to terms with his expulsion and finding a way out of the predicament he's found himself in. The park was a great place to shoot, as it um, had quite a moody feel to it. It seems like this is the place he would go in the situation that he's in. And then the montage ends when Chris bumps into a familiar face. This is the role played by Ben Morris. The familiar face is really the only reason that Chris falls into the bad habits that he does. Um, he, tempts, um, he tempts Chris with a generous offer, um, sound, sounding offer, um, to earn some money. And Chris, without question, takes it thankfully. Um, from here, Chris's situation goes downhill. Um, the lighting in the park isn't at all dark, but it, it's not sunny, um, and um, this is perfect because it wouldn't have seemed right if he was strolling around in a bright sunny park. Um, the moody naturalistic lighting, the um, diegetic ambient sound and um, the general surroundings like the bench we shot the montage on made it a great place to shoot the sequence. The next shot is where Chris's mum finds out he hasn't been going to school. The lighting in the room is very sharp, quite dark, but has strong colours. I wanted the shot to look strong and bold because it contrasts the mother's sudden weakness after the news of her son. 
When she sits down, she melds into the colours of the room, and as her voice seems to get quieter, the power of the room and the colours seem to gain. This is also the part of the trailer where several vo voiceovers come in. The sound quality, as mentioned before in the evaluation on the video cameras, is not very good. And because of this, on a few occasions, for instance, the voices in the park, we had to use um, voiceovers um, to gain clearer dialogue. I have also used some cross-cutting techniques in this section. The sound and picture switches um, between the mother's conversation on the phone and Chris and the familiar faces conversation in the park. The use of voiceovers here is also notable. This shot is really just for shock factor. The shot shows Chris sitting on his bed playing with a knife. You can see the look of contemplation in his eyes and as he knows what he might have to do. The shot is also from a high angle to get, show his vulnerability. The next shot is my favourite in the trailer. It shows Chris walking behind a hedgerow and walking up to a house. The shot originates with Chris in the distance, blurred out and near the edge of um, near the hedge in focus. Um, then, as Chris walks towards the house, he slowly walks into focus. This shot opens um, also opens the new sequence um, of a section of the film. Um, he's about to start his new job and meet the people who is supposed to call um, he is so-called working with. Um, the shot centres Gabriel in front of the door to a house. Again, um, the slats on the door look like prison bars, another link to entrapment. The solarise effect helps the audience realise that we are meeting a new main character, as it is only used for introducing characters. A meek-looking character hides behind the door until the words, I'm here about the package, are mentioned. This new female role opens up the suspicion of romantic possibilities for Chris. She's working for the infamous gangster who, until the full-length trailer comes out, um, will be known simply and mysteriously as he. They enter a dark hallway with chiaroscuro-esque lighting and tells Chris um, to wait in the main room. This is um, one of the worst mistakes he makes in the film as um, he's about to realise who he's dealing with and what he is, has to do to get out of the situation he's in. In unison with Chris's epiphany, Danny calls Chris to um, warn him of the main, the man he's dealing with. The tracking shot shows him hurrying down the street to help him. The final shot is a wide-range shot of Chris up on the hill in the park. He has a look on his face as if he could take on the whole world. This is definitely what I wanted to achieve, as um, the shot has, it has him slightly off-centred with a massive view of London in the background. I got the idea from a BBC, BBC production, Spooks, to use the solar, um, solarise effect with the last shot. In every episode of Spooks, the last shot turns negative and fades to black. In mine, I have the shot of um, Chris. Then with gigantic sound of three sh gunshots, the title of the film appears in the space where Chris is off-centre. One word for each sh gunshot. No. Way. And out. On the final gunshot and on completion of the title, the solarise effect comes in and fades to end the trailer.